From NBC News, this is Today. This morning on today's Consumer Smarts, hair loss. Would you like to know if it's going to happen to you? For some of us, too late. As today's consumer correspondent Janice Lieberman explains, a new genetic screening test just might be the answer. Sleek, shiny, even sexy. Bald is beautiful, say many men. But then again, you also know the other camp. Toupees, hair plugs, you name it. Some guys are forever hunting for the latest follicle fix. People care about hair because it's a sign of youth. Hair loss is something that can devastate you socially, professionally. Baldness means business. From pills to potions to surgery, we spend an estimated three and a half billion dollars every year on baldness cures. But what's the number one reason for baldness? Your genes. This is probably the first direct-to-consumer genetic test available. A new screening test designed specifically for men claims to help predict men's follicle future. Dr. Sharon Keene works for the company selling the test. What HairDX.com does is it helps men in their very earliest phases of hair loss recognize their risk for experiencing androgenetic alopecia. The screening test measures two genetic variants connected to hair loss. The G variant, that those patients have a 60% increased risk for developing advanced pattern hair loss before the age of 40. If you are fortunate and happen to have the A variant, you have an 85% chance that you will never lose your hair. To put your DNA to the test, it'll cost you $149 if you order it yourself, or may cost slightly more if you go through a physician. It's basically just a swab that they put inside their cheek. The test that we're using is a genetic marker, so it shouldn't be misinterpreted as a diagnostic test, but rather a marker of risk. Hair DX hooked up with Dr. Alan Bauman, a hair restoration specialist who provides the test to patients. He tested 47-year-old Manfred Busick, who's balding, and his 20-year-old son Daniel, who wondered if he would eventually lose his hair like his old man. High risk, your variant equals G. Woo! So there's a small <laughs> chance that I might keep my hair. Now Daniel Busick, still young with a full head of hair, knows he's more than likely to lose it. And that's the point of this test. Before your hair starts to go, you can be proactive and explore the multitude of preventative measures. A quick word of caution about the results of the test. Any test that, that hinges on one genetic element uh, may be important and advanced, but we have limited information. The connection between genetics and hair loss still needs more research, says Dr. Sina. We know um, just the tip of the iceberg about the, the number and types of genes involved and we don't know much at all about the environmental factors. No matter what, there's great headway, so to speak, taking place. We're entering a field, I think, an exciting new era of personalized genetics and medicine. And when it comes to treating hair loss, the future is bright. The hair restoration field of medicine has exploded. Uh, so we've come light years in a relatively short period of time. For today, Janice Lieberman, NBC News. And the same company that screens for men just began selling a similar one for women. Some important considerations. The hair DX screening test is based on a study of Caucasian populations. Currently, the FDA does not regulate this type of genetic test. So if you're thinking about it, think about it carefully. And remember that further research is needed to determine all the various factors contributing to hair loss. This is NBC6, South Florida Today. Well, balding is an inevitable genetic reality for millions of men and some women, not to mention an expensive investment for those in search of a legitimate remedy. Well, today, hair restoration physician Dr. Alan Bauman is here to tell us about new treatments that may fight baldness, also something that may predict future hair loss so you can stop it before it gets too bad. Welcome, doctor. Thanks for having me, Trina. It's fantastic to see you again. So many people get so much angst about losing their hair because it's just so much a part of you. That's true. You're saying now that there's a way to know whether or not you're going to be in danger of losing your hair? That's right. That's right. Our diagnostics have gotten so good right now. The newest diagnostic tool that we have is the genetic test for hair loss. So for both men and women, we can take a look at their DNA and say, hey, you're at high risk or no, you're low risk. 
Okay, so we have our lovely model here, one of our beautiful interns. We're going to take a look at her scalp right now. Right. You tell me what we're seeing when you're looking well, at it. Uh, once, when we're doing an assessment for mm -hmm. hair loss, we're also going to look at the level of the scalp to measure density and hair caliber. Now, she has beautiful hair. She but, does so have beautiful hair. It'll be a great a example girl. of what the beautiful hair looks like. So on the screen here, we can see the... Uh, the hair follicles coming right out of the scalp. She's got good hair quality right in through here. But for a young girl in her 20s who's got a risk of hair loss, the, uh, the genetic test would be appropriate to take a look if she's got hair, a hair loss in the family. By seeing her follicles close up like that, does it tell you anything right off without doing the, you know, the high scientific test? Well, you know, we can measure the density and we can measure the hair caliber. And this we can establish as a baseline treatment. So we can take a look over time. If we decide to just watch and wait, we can watch her hairline. We can watch the density. We can watch the hair caliber and check it. Now, to do the test, is it painless? I mean, like, for example, if you do a genetic test on a man or a woman. The genetic test is painless. It's a non-invasive uh, cheek swab. Oh, and we great. send it off to the lab. And in about five weeks, they'll tell you whether you're high risk or low risk. And then what do you do from there if it tells you that you are at high risk? Well, if you're at high risk, then it's a discussion. It's not automatic treatment. We okay. have to discuss what's possible. What can we do with the non-invasive treatments that we have, such as uh, Propecia for men, Minoxidil, or Rogaine for women. In, and then we can get more sophisticated from there. Yeah, because those people have heard about, but there are even more advanced things down, right? Correct. Uh, we have, for example, compounded minoxidil, which is stronger than what you get over the counter. Over the counter comes in two flavors, 2%, 5%. The compounded minoxidil comes out in 6%, 7%, oh, wow. with accelerants, meaning it'll penetrate faster to the scalp. Finasteride, which is the ingredient in Propecia, is now able to be compounded. So it can be less expensive for those people who are on the Propecia. We can start them on compounded medications. And then you also have laser therapy. And I think of laser for removing hair, but this is just the opposite. Correct. You're thinking of a high-powered laser, cutting and burning. Low-level laser therapy, like these units here, handhelds, are used to stimulate the level of the scalp, stimulate the follicles to grow a healthier, better quality hair so she can maintain the hair quality that she has. If you suspect that you might be losing hair, um, what should you do first? Well, the first thing to do is don't panic. Uh, <laughs> Easy for you to say, yeah. doctor, you've got great hair. Well, don't panic, <laughs> but there, you gotta see a physician. You've okay. gotta go to a board certified hair restoration physician who can apply the tools, apply the diagnostics, apply the uh, microscope, take a look, get a history get a physical exam, and then talk to you about what's possible, what's not with the treatments. Is it a cause for panic or not? Should you be worried? And what are the signs? Well, the signs and symptoms in men would be a receding hairline, thinning in the crown, okay? Uh, for women, you may see a loss of density, you may see massive shedding, you may see increased part lines or part width, you may see a receding hairline. And ponytails, is that a bad idea? Well, when you're pulling the hair back day in and day out, um, that could cause traction alopecia. So tight braids day in and day out can cause hair loss. All right, Dr. Bauman, yeah. always some great information. Great seeing you again. Great My hair is here. growing already, I think. <laughs> if not, I'll throw on some of these products. Well, for more information about hair restoration, you can schedule a visit with Dr. Bauman. He's in Boca by calling 1-877-Bauman9 or 1-877-228. 6269. You can go to the website also for the information, baumanmedical.com. Fantastic. Thank you, Dr. Bauman.